Hi, I'm Andrew Beatty, and we're here for another episode of Down to Business. And I guess today's a very important topic because so many businesses rely on people. And we're talking all things people, especially how to uh, put yourself in the best position and get the best people. So today I've got joining with me uh, Sally Bartley and Ali Kamali from People Fusion, a recruitment firm here in Newcastle. Um, first question I got for you girls, and I'll let you intro yourselves a bit in a minute, but why not just use seat? Why do I use a recruiter? You probably get that all the time. We do, we do, yes. very common question. <laughs> I think the main um, point, Andrew, is that the busy quality people aren't combing the ads on Seek, so we really need to tap them on the, so on the shoulder um, to actually get them to come to the hiring table as opposed to just relying on an ad on Seek. Yeah, sure, mm. okay. So more proactive. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Very Sorry, so. get that one out there straight yeah. away because it's, it comes up all the time. Yeah, Sorry, yes. Sally. No, look, our job really is to bring um, top talent to the table. Um, and exactly to Al's point, they're really not um, sort of sitting there throughout the day on Seek and looking. And also Seek as a platform, you know, it's a busy platform. Um, it can become quite diluted. Um, and, you know, the common feedback we hear is um, people are not hearing back about roles. Um, and look, that's not Seek's issue. That is actually each individual company's issue. But we're always saying to clients who want to have a go at doing it themselves, protect your brand and make sure you care about the people that are taking the time to actually apply for your role. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Yeah. I think, and, and again, uh, I opened up with saying how important you know people are. And you know, my business, um, mm. it's all people, whether it be uh, the people in your business or the people that you're servicing. So it's important to get right. And, I know how draining it is when you don't. So That's I right. guess with that, maybe tell us a bit more about yourselves and, and how you really differentiate yourselves and work with business owners. Mm. Mm, sure. Um, I guess the, the first thing to mention is that we, in terms of our specialisations, it's very much uh, white collar roles across multiple industries. Um, so, you know, in the market that the hunter is, we are tapping into professional services environments, manufacturing firms, um, not-for-profit organisations. There's really no company that's, you know, not part of what we can do. It's mainly that we do the corporate service white-collar positions within those firms. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Ali and I have worked together for over 18 years now. Come, um, you don't look <laughs> Started at 12. No. <laughs> um, so we, and, and our team is a really strong, solid team. So we've worked together for many years, which helps us um, really collaborate with a team and, and deliver um, results at a fast pace for clients but not to the detriment of quality searching uh, which is really important and our clients love it too because they've actually built relationships across our business mm -hmm. um, so they're confident to know that when they call we actually you know in a lot of cases have recruited many people in their team who have been there for a lot of years. So it's fair to say because those relationships there's a lot of uh, recurrent um, you know, relationships that keep going over that period Absolutely. of time. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. And it's off the back of those companies' growth, not because there's been a high turnover. So as Sal mentioned, we've often, we're continuing to build on the team, within the team that we've actually been recruiting over the years. Mm. So we can be in a much stronger position to get the right fit amongst individuals within our clients' businesses as well. And what's, you know, again, um, 18 years, you know, the scheme of things isn't that, longer time really but in what you do I'd imagine there's been a fair bit of change. Mm -hmm. um, what's some of the change you've seen and, and, and probably also what's some of the, the things that never change that are important to what you do? Mm. Yeah. Mm, it's a great question because yeah. it's actually one that we often also opposed with is well what do you do differently to what we can just do for, our, for ourselves? Um, so you know I think a number of the social platforms have certainly come into play over the years and um, Previously, it was about the um, the old Newcastle Herald and the, the ads that got posted in there every Saturday, so you'd be combing through to see what was out there. Um, that now plays uh, next to no role in the um, recruitment world, um, but certainly the speed at which social media can be tapped into and the networks available on the likes of LinkedIn, um, you know, on, on Facebook, on other sort of industry groups, that's certainly really strong. Um, but the interesting bit that has absolutely never changed is how we can influence people to actually want to consider a new role. Mm. What, what, do you, what do you mean? Maybe expand a bit by how, mm. how, how that works for a business owner. 
Sure, mm. yes. Um, look, I, it probably comes back to our earlier point about, um, you know, the, the quality candidates aren't just often combing seek and just spitting out applications left, right and centre. Um, they're often too busy performing the role that they're in at the moment. Um, so, you know, what we need to do is, is identify who that quality is that isn't actively looking until we put something in front of them that sparks their interest and starts to get their minds, you know, ticking over that maybe it is time for a new role. So it's fair to say that mm. some people, or well, probably more than some, um, don't even know they're looking. Mm, that's, that's right. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we can't even... Um, so that person, um, really our role is to represent the client. So for us to do that, we need to have a really good thorough understanding of the client's business, the team that they're going into, and what are the challenges that that business is going to be facing so that we can make sure we're getting the right candidate um, to actually um, go in and do a great job and help that biz business change, evolve, grow, what, whatever they're looking to do. Um, and that's where that partnership comes in. Um, things that have changed within our industry. Many years ago, there was a lot of multi-listing. You know, there was a real perception um, from clients to say, oh, I've given it to yourselves and two others. Oh, we're going to throw an ad up in mm -hmm. ourselves as well. well. Copious candidates. Yes, we'll have a great mm -hmm. range. Uh, for many reasons, that's not a great move. Mm -hmm. um, it um, Certainly, you may have candidates are being called um, may have seen the advert they've put up themselves and have been called from other suppliers and they they start to think what's wrong with the role mm. of the organisation, you know, if there's so much noise and activity around this. Mm. It's looking desperate. Yeah, mm. plus there's a lot of um, brand reputation that comes into it as well. Uh, we as an agency don't multi-list because we work exclusively with our clients and dedicate our time so we can be doing those thorough searches. So how the our business and I guess our in industry started to evolve is starting to look at what are ways that we can truly add value and what, where is it that we haven't been able to and for us we knew many years ago that was multi-listing mm. so but that's becoming much more of a you know a thing of the past mm. Mm. yeah I think it's fair to say and, and I mean uh, you know I will say that I have worked with you in this capacity and mm. um, the other aspect is not just trying to push candidates but Absolutely. making sure you understand if it's not fit yeah you know save us headaches by yeah, making sure yeah. you don't recommend something. That's, that's right. right. And we have so many examples where, to come back to your question on, you know, why uh, why us and not just them doing it themselves. I mean, even last week we had a situation where um, a business analyst, so, you know, quite a specialised skill in the Newcastle market, had already taken a role um, at another large organisation locally. Um, we knew that, that he had been previously looking um, he thought that he wanted to give his current position more time, but um, we encouraged him to, to just go and have a no obligation chat with our client about the role that they had. Um, we didn't, you know, we made sure the client was aware that that was the intention of the discussion as well, that it wasn't, you know, a done deal, that he would definitely consider mm. their role. Um, you know, he, uh, we prepped our client as to the key areas that they would need to make sure that they proactively addressed if they wanted to try and get him across the line. And um, after many conversations, we were able to actually attract him away from the other position and into our client's business. So it's fair, fairly, you know, you'd say hands-on approach. Yeah, Very exactly. And no customised. Everyone's in, different. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And there's no way an add-on seek or even the client having the time to have all of those discussions would have actually got that candidate across yeah, sure. the line. Mm. I think one of the other things, and, and, and again from, from my world with the business advisory, mm. um, having uh, turnover if you like in your business, mm. um, even, even as you said, many times not just for turnover, it's for growth, but um, if you don't get it right, mm. and, and that old saying comes in about, you know, um, high, slow, fire, fast, um, but <laughs> mm -hmm. it can have a, a financial impact mm -hmm. and a lifestyle impact on the business, so sure. very important to get right. Yeah, yeah that's and right. Ali and I have our own business, so yes. we are fully aware of, of all of that and mm. have um, that's always at the forefront of our mind and we often would get um, 
our industry has been notorious in the past for um, three month guarantees. You know, you've only got 12 weeks to, to kind of mm, make, a decision. make a decision. So mm. we decided four years ago to go to the market with a 12 month guarantee option for our clients. Um, if they're working exclusively with us, if it's a genuine partnership where we can have the conversation with them, it might be around the way that um, they're profiling themselves or perhaps a role when we're actually scoping the position with them. Um, they're, they're often at that point is a lot of um, information sharing and advising we can do to help them attract better candidates mm -hmm. and for them actually get a better candidate to um, you know, influence more change and, mm. and what have you. So um, we went to the industry and um, are still offering and mm. will continue to a 12 month guarantee to demonstrate to our clients that it is as important for us equally mm. to get them the right person. Mm. Mm. Okay. That guarantee, I think, um, you know, what Sal and I are true believers in is not pointing out all the wonderful things about a candidate and, you know, selling them to the client. Um, but making sure that the client is also aware of the areas that we see, there needs to be further development of the candidate, or some watch points. Um, so that way the client is also um, fully aware, you know, um, that they aren't going in blind because at the end of the day, not only does the client lose time and money by making the wrong decision, but by us offering our 12 month guarantee, we won't, you know, keep our doors open if we're doing um, replacements galore. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it certainly has um, shown the market that we are willing to back ourselves as well. And, and that's probably a good segue into my next point. Um, to do, or to give that kind of guarantee and to have success, to keep going back to it, mm. uh, you need to make sure the process is, you know, fairly um, robust, robust, fairly succinct mm. and, and thought out. Talk me through, um, what a successful recruitment process looks like mm. to get the most success out of a process. Yeah. Yes. I think it starts with the partnership between the client and, and us, uh, the consultant, because we've got to make sure we get the foundations right. We mm. understand um, their environment, what their business is facing. So it may have been that they've been very much in a business as usual pattern for the last five or six years and their industry is rapidly changing yet they don't have the right person to lead them through that change as an example. So we need to understand all of those things so we can start to really scope and, mm. and form up the role and start to get a good idea of that candidate persona that we're going to be looking for mm. um, to you know, attract to be wanting to be interested in, in the client's role. Yeah, the good, mm. the bad and the ugly. Because at mm. the end of the day, we would prefer to know the full state of the nation, whether that is that that client's business may have been having um, challenges or, or declining market, maybe they've had turnover in certain departments um, or branches, etc. If we can truly understand all of that, um, we can make sure that A, we're going to find people that have got the resilience and determination to, you know, to help the client get back on track. Um, and the less we can minimise surprises when the when the successful candidate mm. starts in the role, we can it, it provides greater success of that person being successful and staying long term. Because the minute they start scratching the surface and finding things that they didn't expect to, is when they start to question whether they made the right decision as well. Okay. Mm. And what about on the on the flip side from mm. Yeah, that's, the, that's doing the partnership with, the, I guess, your, your client being the business yes. and the business owner yeah. and making sure we understand everything. What about getting the right talent mm. and, and making sure that's a success from, you know, from their point of view mm. uh, and, and that the business owner gets the outcome they're after? Mm. It's making sure we represent the role as it is yes. and appropriately to that candidate to mitigate the risk of um, getting a great person in there and then it's not as it's explained. Mm. Um, but then it comes, the, the, the part of that is really around that selection process mm. and that probity and checking and really um, engaging with the candidates. And I guess that for us is where a big chunk of our time mm. um, is spent with the candidates. Because as you start to build a relationship with a candidate, um, you start to really understand what makes them tick, why are they looking, why are they interested, or if we've directly approached them, making sure sometimes it's about slowing down to go faster. So making sure that um, you are not skipping through a process quickly mm. um, 
we, we're actually taking them um, through that process and making sure that they are really going to be ready to move. Um, and yeah, and that the role is the right role for them. Mm. And okay. We don't have a set of standard questions that we just ask every person in every interview. Whereas a lot of um, organisations, that may be the case where they just use the blueprint of the same interview questions. Whereas when you look at a comp one company versus another, they're never going to be the same. So we make sure that our questioning, our reference checking, um, there is a, um, a myth that there's never a bad reference that gets done, which actually isn't true at all. We would go um, at least every day that we're doing a reference, that we're finding out um, you know, some negative things about the people that we're considering for a position. Mm. We do all of those things up front. Um, and it's all customised based on what we've learnt about the client's business, about the role, about what's going to be required to make the successful candidate or the candidate that gets the role successful. Yeah, sure. Mm. So a lot of the videos we've done to date to help business owners, there's been a common theme no matter what the specialty, what the topic, etc. Mm -hmm. about you know, the need to plan. By, by what you're talking mm. about here, I, I'd say that's very much a, a standard response in this interview as well. That having a plan around needs, workforce, and even uh, maybe before the need to recruit, they're working yeah. with you much early mm -hmm. on. Definitely. So, so how does a business owner, within their plan, and what they need to plan for, um, what needs to be in there to get the best talent? What, what do they need to do in addition to that partnership with you? How can mm -hmm. they present their business in a better way? Yep. There's many different things. <laughs> yes. um, and look, some you go to and they're very organised and structured. Others are really starting from the beginning. And the good thing about, um, and I guess where we enjoy working, is no business is the same. So you, we are able to jump in and help at all different stages. But certainly around having a think about if you were um, a candidate in the market and you were being told about an organisation and who you would be reporting to, what are they going to do? And we all go online and check it out. So, you know, starting by even having a look at um, the presence there. Now, it doesn't, you know, some particularly small um, business go, oh, I haven't got time for all of that and it's not very great. Sometimes it's just little tweaks that can make a really big difference. Um, and also looking at different um, profiles of perhaps um, the manager that they might be reporting to and their LinkedIn profile, just as some really quick and easy wins for them to start to get them ready for, uh, to be attractive for people to actually want to come and take a seat mm. at the table. Mm. Um, good quality job descriptions. And again, we've gone in and we still do now, we'll speak to clients and they're like, oh, I haven't got a job description, you know, it's a new role. That's where we can again help them sit with them, give them some advice mm. and really flesh out the role. Um, I think where um, a great value add for clients is around sometimes they actually don't quite know what they need. They might be 70% there, uh, but there's still some uncertainty. By having you know, you know, a conversation with us, we can start to ask some good workforce planning questions, mm -hmm. um, some good organisational sort of um, development questions, and start to really give them ideas um, about w with a candidate um, that you're looking for for that 70%. These are some of. Um, the strengths that you would be able to attract to kind of add on and into that role, mm. particularly if you're talking about a, um, an SME. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I guess, um, as you know, Andrew, accountants, you can't just turn the tap on and have a chartered accountant there waiting Not good one, when you need one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's many other sectors and professions that have got similar challenges. You know, a lot of the health professions have, um, the legal industry has, there's many that do. Um, so I think, you know, highlighting people in your in the employer's business that can be, um, I'm going to say the word dating, but be able to go and have a coffee with a candidate that you might become aware of, you know, whether it be through people fusion or, or other means, that you just start to build up a, um, I guess, a, a group of potential employees for your business for the future. Um, rather than just turning or thinking that the tap can turn on immediately mm. when you need mm. them. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's no harm in, in spending a half an hour getting to know what talent's out there um, and them getting to know you so that, you know, you could actually even be a plan for them in 12 months' time, even if it's not a now move yeah, for them. Yeah, good, mm. good point. And we can always look at 
things like you, you have a client say it's so hard to get this type of um, person it's like well where are those people you know what are they doing what are they reading or watching or you know what industry groups are they part of mm. and how does your business interact with those industries um, and also again going back to as simple as a website if they are on your website looking at you is there somewhere that they can easily see a picture of the team or and um, job vacancies mm. or something like that yeah. so they can click on and engage mm. and always have that presence of we're always interested in great talent. And as you said before, like um, I mean, we referred to LinkedIn and websites, but there are so many social media platforms oh, now, and, and just information on the yeah. web generally. You need yeah. to be very aware of what you are putting out there. Yes, yeah. and how you're right. tapping into your existing um, team as well for them to be having yeah. the discussions yeah, at the stuff. barbecue yeah. about yeah. what it's like to work at at the company that they're, you know, are working at so that, you know, they're telling some really good news stories to the market as well. Yeah, that's good. That's mm. good tip. Yeah. So I guess a lot of the stuff we just focused on was really around attracting talent mm. and, and getting into that pipeline, I guess. Um, one of my favourite topics, <laughs> interviews. Okay. Um, I'd like to say that, you know, you never have a bad interview, but I've had some doozies, so I say never. <laughs> but generally, I think you get what I mean. You've been in more than me. Yeah. Um, most people put their best foot forward in an interview and it's, it's generally not uh, the real person that you see all the time. Um, what's some of the tips and what's some of the different approaches that can be applied to get a more authentic process or mm. a more authentic outcome in that short space of time you have? Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think to Ali's point around that engagement and being open to have a coffee, don't yeah. just make it about the one interview mm. and kind of hang your, your hat on that as a business owner really engage with the candidate, make sure that there's additional phone calls or an opportunity, bring them through for a site visit or to meet the team, see how they interact and engage, because that's when they start to really relax and, and open up. Mm. Interviews are quite daunting for mm. majority of people, um, and there's an element of nerves, which is completely natural, and in fact, if people weren't didn't have a little bit of nervousness, they probably aren't that humble. Mm. Um, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so sometimes they, uh, we get feedback daily from candidates when you're doing, how did the interview go? They all, the common theme is, I got in the car and thought of all the things I could have said. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if um, somebody is recruiting themselves and um, for their business, make sure you give them a call the next day and say, thank you for your time. You know, was there anything mm. else you wanted to add? How do you feel you went? Because um, it's amazing, there'll be a lot more that then comes out of that secondary yeah, conversation. Yeah, that's great point. And mm. I, I, I think it'd still be missed a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. you know, people are running their businesses. They're busy. That a lot of the times, you know, they're interacting with their own clients. So it's like they just want a solution. Mm. But it's these sorts of things that if the time is taken, you've got far greater success of having a successful. Uh, candidate onboarded and in your business rather than as we mm. all know get the wrong person into your team and it takes a, a lot more time at the other end mm. yes you mentioned before Andrew about everyone's been in some doozy interviews um, interestingly often it's the interviewer that can be the doozy as well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know where they um, maybe aren't the best person from the company to, to be represent. representing mm. The, the organisation of the interview because more and more, you asked earlier about what's changed over 18 years. I would say one of the things that's changed mostly is that it's very much a two-way decision-making mm. street now. Um, you know, uh, employees have so many more options available. Mm. They're willing to be more um, transient. You know, they're willing to do FIFO roles or to commute to Sydney for work or wherever it might be. Um, so the employer needs to actually put their best foot forward mm. yeah, just as point. much mm. as the employee. Yeah, mm. and what we know years ago, a lot of people were leaving purely based on money. You know, majority, when we used to look at the different um, reports come out from, um, you know, Seek and, and Hay Salary data, it was like they would leave for money mm. or because of their leadership. People now, you know, within the top three, it's absolutely around lifestyle. So ensuring that they have that balance and flexibility. So ability to work from home, um, have remote access in a really trusted, um, you know, way. Um, and that is much more common, you know, within the last sort of four to five years than what it was previously. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good point. I think um, 
not just last year, but a few years in a row now, I've been reading some good Harvard articles on research they've done that shows where money actually ranks yes. in, in, yeah. in, a, in a person's decision making yep. around recruitment. Mm. And I think to some of the, the older crew, which maybe I'm in, maybe I'm not, <laughs> you start to think and you go, well, that was always the way we, we negotiated, we yep. made our differential points. But mm. my, like I know in our industry, it's all about learning development and challenging work. And mm. money, I think, was fifth. Yeah. What are you yeah. seeing in that space? Yeah, often mm. money is down around mm. um, somewhere between you know four and six in, in most industries. Um, yeah, certainly flexibility is becoming more mm. and more um, a, a real key. Um, and it doesn't mean you know working three days a week no. or whatever that might be, but it's about the employer is showing that they've got trust in the employee that if they're not in till 10 because they're working from home or they're working from a cafe or yep. um, they may have dropped you know their child to school that it's more about the output um, so employees are definitely um, wanting their their um, employers to show trust and you know authenticity with the way that they can engage with each other and that makes sense with you know uh, the amount of dual income mm, working mm. families these days, yes. it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And, and realistically, I guess, you know, what we started with, we were saying about technology, also from a ability to access things, that's the thing, you don't need to be sitting at the, the desk necessarily nine to five. That's right. That's it. Yeah. And I guess if, as an employer, if you can't offer it um, for whatever reason, whether it be the particular role that the person's performing, um, being upfront about that so that you can then interview accordingly, um, and you know, goes back to our point earlier about the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, making sure that the interview is really authentic about what you can mm. and can't offer, because it's much more expensive to, you know, for someone to be leaving in six months' time than maybe if you just had to take a couple of extra weeks at the outset to keep on looking for the yeah, right sure. candidate. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I guess. With that in mind, and we, we spoke about some of the trends mainly in what is rising at the top in the decision making process, what else but in general recruitment, you know, talent searches, general employment, are you seeing that can benefit business owners they should be looking for and make sure they're on, they're on top of from, a, from a, I guess, what you're seeing in the real market sense? Mm. I think um, there's uh, confidence building, so people are starting to look for new opportunities so that's so there's a couple of points within that one make sure that the, the staff you want to retain you are looking after and having it's a good point yeah really, point. really open conversations because if you're not there are a lot of opportunities coming through um, and the other part is it's a great time now to do a check on your um, I guess um, ability to go to market you know so if you are looking at the next financial year which we're nearly nearly at again mm. um, but start to think about future planning you know so with all of our clients we love to talk to them about workforce planning we know well in advance um, not always but when we do you've got a lot more time to actually work for your client in the background mm. to be helping them get ready to go to market mm. yeah good yeah. point um, other sorts of factors would be, um, uh, you know, getting some of your team members engaged in the um, in the recruitment process, the employment process. So, you know, we touched earlier on, um, you know, on the formal interview process, but then also getting them to go and have a coffee with other employees. Because at the end of the day, if you want to get the great talent, they want to know what it's really like to work there. Mm. So there's definitely an emerging. Um, trend in it not just being about management that are involved in selection processes um, and also things being done in a more of an informal sense you know it's not this interrogation of a Q&A but you know that it is maybe at a coffee shop or it's out for dinner or whatever it might look like um, just so you can show that you're progressive generally as an real, organisation. As well. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great point, Ali, what you said about um, the employees being involved too. Mm. I know just in our own business that you know um, some of the people and some of the insight they can give you before that process into who others are in the market and that sort of stuff, which, mm. you know, depending on your level, you're probably not going to find out. So mm. um, it's, a, it's a great point and I, I like the one about... You know, looking after your own people. Mm, I think that's yeah, often definitely. Overlooked. And yeah. they're not always, um, you know, really positive conversations. You know, sometimes it does take either party to um, be able to to say it how it is and have a brave conversation that 
something's not working mm. here. Um, but you know, that can be worth more import than just thinking that you're going to be able to put an ad out there, find someone better than them and you'll be set. Mm. Um, you know, that, that at times working on who you've currently got, uh, if you believe they can go from good to great, will be a better outcome for you than just always thinking that there's someone else out there in the market. Yeah. Mm. No, and it's a great mm. point. It's funny, from an, you know, you talk from an accounting sense, we recognise, um, not a good thing, but we recognise employers as expenses or liabilities, <laughs> when realistically they're such a, a major asset of your business and mm. Mm. You know, that, that ongoing need to fulfil spaces is quite draining. So mm. uh, that's they're right. one of the points. That's right. I guess just to start to bring it together, um, and I'm probably going to miss half the things you said, so <laughs> by all means correct me, but I mean, you said a partnership, an absolute, an absolute key part mm. for any business owner with uh, the, the recruitment um, you know, resource that they choose to go with. And I think um, it's probably one that's often overlooked. We had that uh, in our last um, video with, when we talked to a lawyer, we've had them with our IT and probably a banker. Not the common ones that you think of as an ongoing partnership that just generally go to when you've got an issue, but mm -hmm. it's a common theme about having you know, these people around you that are experts and having a plan to roll out their mm, needs. That's mm. right. Think of us as just as important as you, Beats, as their accountant. Oh, more important than that. <laughs> I'll tell them that. You know, At the end I, of the day, without the people, you don't have a business. That's right. So. <laughs> and I think, I think you've clearly differentiated, you know, why you would use people like yourselves rather than just go at yourself. Um, mm. You know, I know for me, I've got time, and, and that's the biggest part. I know I've got a resource there that can give mm. us the outcome we want mm -hmm. without me having to worry about it. So mm. um, that's a clear one. Um, the recruitment process, making sure you put your best foot forward with regard to how you're representing your business, yes. telling the whole story, you know, That's talking it. through some of the needs and being authentic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself out of your normal environment, such as the coffee shop, mm. yeah, making sure you get to see how people really act. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Uh, what else have I lost? <laughs> making sure, I guess, that you are aware of that technology and everything mm. that mm. is available. So um, one of the things I picked up on what you said is really um, whilst we want to make sure we're thought out and we're, 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 we're well thought through the process of who we're going to recruit, mm. we haven't got time to um, you know, muck around. We've got to make sure that we are there because they do have a lot of options these days. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And just to that point, um, we are constantly working on our live talent. So when you might not have a need, we're still working on actually yes, generating yeah. the talent to, to have ready for you. And, and as you said before, mm. we said from a talent point of view, they might know they're looking, That's but likewise right. from a business mm. point of view, yes. you don't necessarily be looking, but you might present someone that we go, well, yeah, Absolutely. I'd love to meet them. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and whether it's for next week or next year, it's much better to know that that talent is out there. Good. Mm. And the other real one I loved at the end there was really about, um, Getting creative with what you can offer someone. What is the complete package? Mm. As you said, flexibility mm. is a key one. Mm. Um, learning and development, etc. So, what is it? It's not just a, a money play there. Yes. Uh, and key point: look after your existing people as well. Absolutely, very yeah. important. Is there anything I've missed there that you'd like to close out on? I think you've summarised you've done it very well. well Beats. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've summarised it well. Yeah. Um, and it's just different, I guess, to what it was. 10, 15, 20 years ago, where it was more of a, um, you know, I guess a master servant type scenario in terms of employer employee. Mm -hmm. You know, it now is about collaborating together and finding how you're going to keep on achieving the company's goals together rather mm -hmm. than, you know, the master servant scenario. Oh, it's great. I, I yeah. couldn't agree more. And I think, yeah. you know, um, some days, I won't, won't get me saying this every day, but some days I want to kill them. But uh, <laughs> the reality is they are such an important part of mm -hmm. not just a business, but relationships. It's what yeah. makes what makes our, our customers, our peer relationships yeah, and our business. Right. So yes. uh, it is something we should get right. But, Definitely. Um, I thank right. you for opening up our eyes a bit and uh, for, the, for the people watching as well. So, mm. you know, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Andrew. And, thank uh, you for having us. Thanks for watching another video of Down to Business. Cheers. <laughs>